Hello and welcome to another pen video for me, Penultimate Dave. So I have here another 10 pens currently inked up this week. I think let's go through these briefly one by one. We'll go through them in a little bit more detail and then we'll do a writing sample. So from left to right we have the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. We have the Tatcha Myabi's Winter's Breath. We have a Classic Pens LB5 in the Kalseki. We have a Sailor King of Pens Sakura Nagar. We have an Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra, and this is in the Arco Verde. We have an Anoto Magna Carta. We have an Estabrook SD Oversize in the Sparkle. We have an Estabrook SD Oversize, and this is the Rocky Top. We have a Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust and a Visconti Watermark. So I think let's go through these pens in a, a little bit more detail here. So this is the stunning Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. Uh, this is what started my journey for uh, Italian pens and also for Visconti. Uh, I have had over 70 Viscontis in my collection and uh, I am now down to... Uh, below 69 or below 70 uh now it's not that i dislike the ones that i've sold it's just sometimes you move on and your tastes change and there have been some viscontis that i have purchased that i i liked when i purchased but then i just thought over time you know what i would maybe prefer more of the homo sapiens for instance uh i did have a few more opera masters uh, in my collection, I now have a few less. So it really just depends on how you feel as time moves on. And I think our collections do evolve over time. Uh, I think if a collection doesn't evolve over time, then uh, either you are absolutely 100% happy with what you have in that collection, or maybe that you're just not liking the love of fountain pens. Uh, you can uh, literally just have 10 fountain pens or 100 fountain pens and be perfectly happy. And uh, I think, though, most of us do still prefer to be able to see what else is out there. And this was my first Visconti, and I absolutely loved it. And then I looked into getting more Viscontis. So this is a Paravac filler, uh, it's a demonstrator, it's a double reservoir, uh, you've got the hook safe lock mechanism on here, you've got a concave section, uh, the nib here is a, a 23 cap palladium fine nib, uh, it has these celluloid ribbons uh, throughout the demonstrator body, uh, it looks a lot more gorgeous when it's not inked up. Uh, but I I love writing with this pen. Uh, this is what sent me down the Italian pen route and the Visconti pen route. This is a fine nib and it writes exquisitely well. And I cannot say that for most fine nibs that I have uh, either had in my collection or that I have been able to try from other people's collections. So for me, this is a beautifully out-of-the-box tuned nib and uh, I have since had a few more finds from Visconti that have been really nice uh, for instance the Opera Master Golden Dust that I have here inked up as well this week uh, but there have also been some fine nibs from Visconti as well that have been a little more on the rigid side that these are these two here are quite bouncy nibs uh, because they are 23 cap played nibs but you can also get some nibs that are not so bouncy. Uh, I personally prefer the bouncy nibs. Uh, I do still have a lot of steel nibs, uh, for instance, these Estabrooks, that are obviously going to be fairly rigid nibs because they are steel, they're not gold or they're not palladium. But I still enjoy writing with them, though. So it really depends on the pen and the character or characteristic of the pen, uh, whether or not you like it or not. 
The next pen I have inked up this week is a Tatcha Miyabi's Winter's Breath. And uh, this now is over a year old. Uh, I'm just thinking, yeah, it was my birthday in February 2021 that I uh, purchased this pen for. Uh, I love this pen to death. Um, it is a Tatcha pen. Tatcha do some very good Mackie pens. Uh, I don't know if they subcontract these out to other artists in Japan or if they have their own artists doing this. Uh, I'm guessing they probably subcontract it out or they have a, a Mackie studio that, that does the pens for them. But I don't know. Uh, if you do know, then let me know because I would be interested in finding out. Uh, I haven't reached out to Tatcha. I haven't asked them. Perhaps I should. But this is a beautiful pen. This is... Uh, the Miyabi's Winter's Breath, uh, it's got crushed quail's eggs here. Uh, they crush the quail's eggs, and then they layer them all back on this pen and then lacquer it. And then you've also got these abalone strips of Raden there. Uh, it's a beautiful, beautiful pen, and I really love this to bits. Uh, Tatcha do actually uh, have branded nibs, but they're not made by Tatcha. They're made by Sailor. So this is another reason why I like this pen. It's not a typical Sailor nib, though. It's a number six size nib on this one. Uh, it's not a typical Sailor nib uh, in terms of like some of the bounce that you get to it. Uh, this is a broad nib, not a medium nib. Uh, but it, I guess it kind of writes between a Western medium and a Western broad. But I like it. And uh, I have to say that I, I do enjoy this pen. I do enjoy writing with it a lot. Uh, it is a cartridge converter pen, holds 0.7 milliliters of ink. Uh, I believe the pen is made of ebonite. Uh, most uh, Makie, Yurushi, uh, Raden pens typically are made of ebonite. You can get some, though, that are not. I'm thinking of the Pilot Vanishing Points or the Capulus, uh, the Raden versions. Uh, those are not uh, made out of ebonite. Uh, but typically, most uh, pens are... Uh, that uh, have Mackie work or Raden work on them. I'm thinking more along the lines of uh, Nakaya's and um, also uh, Danny Trio's as well. So I have that pen inked up with me this week as well. And then the next pen I have is actually a pen made by Sailor. Uh, and uh, you'll see this here. It says Sailor. And it says LB5 now, and it says Kauseki, 47 to 50. Now, th this is actually a classic Pens LB5. Uh, so this is made by uh, Classic Pens or Lambrew Pens, Andy Lambrew. Uh, this uh, is a beautiful pen. It's got diffusion bonded acrylic. But the LB5 model was made by Sailor. Uh, on behalf of Classic Pens. And these are beautiful pens. They are modelled after uh, the size of the Sailor King pen, which I have uh, here. Uh, this also has a Sailor King pen nib, so you've got the 1911 on there. Uh, this is a medium nib. So because it's a medium Asian nib, uh, it is going to be more of a Western fine. Uh, it's a cartridge converter, holds, again, 0.7 milliliters of ink. But the LB5 is typically the same or very similar to a Sailor King a pen. And I say similar because if you look at this here next to a Sailor King a pen, even though this is the Mackie Raden version, you'll see here that this pen is longer. And it also, you can probably tell the difference here, it is quite more girthier. So you can see here around the cap band, this LB5 is a lot thicker, and I do like that uh, in the LB5. Uh, the LB5s do sell for silly money. Um, they are, I think they came out around about $1,500 when they were released. They are now selling anywhere from 2500 upwards. So, yeah, it, it's, uh, it is a, a crazy price for what it is. Um, but they are quite sought after. They're, they only come in 50 in each colour. This is the Kauseki, the uh, uh, metal ore. And uh, 
there's only 50 of these worldwide. So I have one of 50 here. The next pen here, as I mentioned, is a Sailor King of Pen. And again, you can see this here, Sailor Japan, founded 1911. So if you wonder why uh, Sailor have 1911 engraved on their nibs, that's the reason why. They were founded in 1911. So this is a Sailor King of Pen. Uh, this is a Machie. It is a Raden. Uh, and it uh, is uh, the same size as a regular Sailor King of Pen. Uh, but this does have some beautiful artwork on it. So again, you have these abalone shells here uh, cut into little chips or little, I'd almost say heart-shaped uh, petals. And the idea is that this is the Sakura Nagar. So this is uh, translating to uh, the, the um, Sakura petals flowing down a river. You've got this gold dust as well. It's not a pen for everyone. It is a little bit bling. Uh, I know that. Uh, I like it, though. Uh, it has a Sailor King of Pen nib again. And this one I've got a broad nib on. So this writes a little bit more like a Western medium to Western broad. Uh, again, it's a cartridge converter pen. I do like it. Uh, honestly, if you wanted... Uh, a Sailor King of Pen runs from around about... 700 pounds euros dollars upwards depending on the model and normally that's for the resin black resin or the uh, ebonite version uh this one comes in at almost double that uh but it's still at least half the price cheaper than the lb5 so uh, you do have to order these especially though some retailers will have one or two of them because they have ordered them especially but these are made to order. So uh, you can't, these are not just made in, in batches. They're not numbered. Uh, they're not limited edition, but they're not, I guess they, they probably are made in batches from Sailor, but uh, they don't get shipped out like a general release of pen does. So uh, from that perspective, uh, for a retailer to get hold of the pen, they have to order that pen, especially and get it in and normally that is for a customer but i know uh quite a few retailers that have ordered these in where they've ordered a couple a customer has uh, ordered one so one goes to the customer and then one goes into stock whether or not that is kind of permitted by sailor i don't know but uh, they are special order pens basically the next pen i have inked up is this one and this is an armando simone club bologna extra it's the Arco Verde, and this is a celluloid pen. It's not a resin. It's not an ebonite pen, uh, but this is beautiful. So you can see there that Arco, very much like a wood grain effect, but it also has this beautiful shine to it. This is a pneumatic uh, filling pen, so it has a metal shaft inside it. It has a rubber or latex sack, uh, and you... Uh, unscrew this you pull it out you put your finger over that hole and you plunge it down let your finger off that creates a vacuum and ink rushes into the sack now these do have an 18 karat gold magic flex nib these nibs are made by bock uh, they only come in one nib width and that's medium and they typically write more to a western board because they write fire hose wet so i have this one uh, inked up with me this week uh, and I do love how these Bologna extras write. They do write very wet. It is difficult to write with them uh, in a notebook because the reason why is that they will take four or five minutes before you can turn the page. And you also have to be using something like Tomare River or maybe Rhodia um, because otherwise you're going to get feathering. You're going to get bleed through because they are, they are very, very wet pens. Uh, but uh, it's a pen that I like writing with. Uh, I typically don't write with these in notebooks that often. I do write on Temerary River loose leaf, so I write with these in letters more, uh, or I will use it on notepads where I am taking meeting notes uh, at work. The next pen here I have uh, inked up is the Anoto Magna Carta. Now, Anoto, I don't know if you know, but Anoto are a English company, 
uh, they, like many companies like Conway Stewart and uh, Wahl uh, originally, um, uh, they did go under. Um, uh, and it is unfortunate. Uh, this has, uh, like Armando Simone Club, uh, this is a brand that has been revived. And um, the the new owners, uh, James Body, uh, Bodhi and uh, Feng Li that works at Anoto, uh, are making some beautiful pens. They are uh, not making these internally. They have artisans, more silver artisans, that, that are making these pens for them. So... There is a, a lot more higher cost value to these pens when you compare them to maybe an Italian-made pen. But these are beautiful works of art. So this is the Magna Carta. You can see the Anoto clip there. Uh, this has parts of the, the British Magna Carta inscribed into this silver barrel. You can see it here on the body. You have the English coat of arms there as well. Uh, so the Magna Carta was a document that was uh, created and signed in 1215. So it's got a lot of, of history. This is an AG95 silver pen. Uh, so this uh, is a heavy pen. Uh, if I remove the cap, you'll see here it's got a number seven size Anoto nib. Uh, it's an 18 cat gold nib. An ABS plastic feed there. Uh, you do also have this coin uh, here on the cap finial as well. Um, and if I put the, it's, it's a cartridge converter as well. If I put the cap on, you will see, and I've probably got this up the wrong way, but that is the silver hallmark there. And then the limited edition one. So if I move this back round, you'll see that there. Uh, but this is a beautiful pen, and it's a pen that I love writing with, and uh, I have that one inked up with me this week as well. Another pen that I actually um, purchased uh, in December, um, at Christmas uh, last year, is this one. It's an Estabrook SD. Now, I do have, uh, I think, only one diamond cast material. Diamond cast is a resin material or i i guess it may be slightly hybrid um but it's a resin material that has real diamond dust inside or infused inside the resin so that it sparkles and this has one of them i have a custom pen made by uh, erica teddy Aluso with a diamond cast uh but this is uh an estabrook and i do have a soft spot for the diamond cast material so uh, I decided that I would buy this one. Uh, I've never had an Estabrook uh, prior to this. I have tried Estabrooks, and they were okay. The nibs wrote okay. They're still nibs. Um, they didn't really give me uh, a characteristic that said to me I needed to buy it um, in terms of the writing experience or the look. Uh, this one, though, in terms of look, it did because of the diamond cast material. Um, these are steel nibs. Uh, it's an oversized. Uh, all of the previous ones that I tried were not oversized. So this is oversized. Uh, I can post the cap if I wanted to, uh, but it is oversized. So I wouldn't need to, honestly. Uh, it does have a steel nib, though, uh, and that is a medium nib. Strange enough, I actually wanted this in a broad nib because this is a Yovo nib. And I typically prefer Yovo nibs that, that are broad nibs and not medium nibs. I've I found that the Yovo nibs tend to be a little bit more on the drier side. So a medium being a, a narrower width uh, tends to be a little bit drier, but also uh, a little bit more sort of crisp when it writes. But uh, So I can only get this. The, the stock availability over Christmas was a medium nib or I think an extra fine nib. And I wasn't going to go for an extra fine nib. I went for a medium nib, and I absolutely am in love with this nib. Uh, it's not a bouncy nib. It's a steel nib. Uh, it's a rigid nib, but it writes nice and smooth. It really is beautiful. Um, the filling system is a cartridge converter. So, again, holds 0.7 milliliters of ink, roughly. Uh, but uh, it's, it's a filling mechanism that is tried and trusted. 
easy to clean out. You can also replace the cartridge converter if you had issues with it. So from that perspective, it's pretty good. At the same time, I also picked up this one. Again, another Esther Brook that you can see there. Again, another SD in the oversize. And again, this also has that diamond cast uh, infused material. So again, so this now gives brings me to three diamond cast pens that I have in my collection. And I have to say, I do like this color a lot. Uh, this is the Rocky Top. Now, you could get this in a regular size or you could get it in the oversize. I got it in the oversize. Again, it has another steel nib, but this one I was able to pick up in a broad nib. Uh, I did think that I probably wouldn't like the medium nib on, on this Sparkle SD, and I would just probably swap the nibs over. <laughs> um, but I'm liking the medium nib on there. Um, so again, it is a Yovo nib. Uh, it's made by Yovo, and a steel nib. It's a cartridge converter pen. Uh, you should be able to post the cap. There you go. Um, but it it, it doesn't post that deeply or securely, I would say. Like you can post it, but it's going to still move around a little bit. Uh, you kind of have to wedge it onto the back of the pen quite hard. Uh, but I, I like that pen as well. Um, it, it's got that diamond cast, uh, real diamond dust infused into the body of that, that resin. So uh, typically when you've got a resin and you've got it, Mixed with other things like wood or cone, um, like pine cone, stuff like that, typically becomes like a, a material called alumilite. Um, I'm not sure if you would call this alumilite. I think you don't. I think that's really down to the makeup of that resin. Uh, so I think these are deemed resins, uh, but infused with diamond dust. The next pen. I have inked up this week is the Opera Master Golden Dust, and this has a beautiful smoky effect going on here. It's a faceted pen. It's an Opera Master. Uh, it is a limited edition. Only sixty of these were made, uh, and this is number three. So uh, this is quite good. Uh, you'll see here that uh, it has a uh, number six size. 23 cap palladium nib it's a fine nib there with an abs plastic feed uh, it is a long pen it's quite a heavy pen you can post the cap if you want to uh, but i do like this pen a lot so uh, i have that one inked up with me this week as well and then the last pen i have inked up is this one and it really really is getting low on ink and i really am going to have to flush this one out uh, I have used this pen a lot recently uh, over the last few months, so I think I'm going to actually flush this out and put it back into storage. I do love writing with this. Uh, I have really enjoyed having an orange ink to be able to write with uh, on a weekly basis, almost. Um, I do have other pens I can put orange inks in, so I'm just thinking I will uh, probably put this back into storage and I will ink up another pen with an orange ink. So this is the Visconti Watermark. Um, this uh, is a beautiful pen. Uh, it's a demonstrator with this overlay uh, with these cutout Vs for Visconti. Uh, it's a silver overlay with a, a plating of, I think, 0.3 microns of palladium to give it this shine so it will not tarnish. It does become a fingerprint magnet, though. Uh, the nib in here is a 23 cap palladium medium nib, but uh, I love how this nib writes. It's got a little bit of a bounce to it. Not as much as some of my palladium nibs that are on Visconti's, but it does have quite uh, a little bounce to it that, that makes it nice writing with it. Uh, and a little bounce really gives you a little bit of like shock absorbance type thing. So it just makes it feel a little bit more luxurious when you write with a bouncy nib. So there you have it. That's my Coney ink pens for this week. I think with that, let's go and do a writing sample. So the first pen is the Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. So we'll do an ink swatch here. And 
this is a nib that I do like writing with a lot. It's a fine nib, but it's a wet nib and it's got a bounce to it. And I just love it. I love it to bits. So uh, this one uh, uh, is the uh, Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog. And it is a fine, and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is uh, Pilot Iwashizuku, and it is Con Heki. But that is a beautiful ink uh, and a beautiful pen as well. So uh, I have that one inked up with me this week. The next pen is the Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now this also is inked up with another blue ink as well. So this is the Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath, and uh, this is a uh, broad, and it's an 18 cap gold nib. And then the ink in here is Pelican Edelstein Topaz, and uh, this is an ink that I have commented on previous um, currently inks that. I find it's a very, very good substitute for Pilot Washizuku Kompeki. You can see a little bit of difference between the blues here. I would say that Kompeki tends to be a little bit of a shade lighter. But I think, depending on where you are, depending on the cost of ink, uh, and de depending on the availability of Pilot Washizuku versus Pelican Eagle Sign ink, uh, I think it's a fairly good comparison replacement ink the next pen is the classic pens lb5 in the kawaseki now we'll do an ink swatch here now this uh is an ink that i don't normally ink up in this pen and i decided i would choose a different ink because i typically ink this one up with pilot washizuku sakushi and I find it's a nice brown ink, but I wanted uh, a, an ink that kind of matches the color of this pen just slightly better. Uh, and also Pilot Washer Sukushi is actually uh, on its way out in terms of its end of life, at least at the moment. So this is the uh, classic pens LB5 and it's the Kawaseki. And this is a... Um, Asian medium, so almost a Western fine to medium nib. Uh, and uh, because it's a Sailor King of Pen nib, it's a 23, or sorry, it's a 21 carat, not 23. It's a 21 carat gold nib. 23 carat would be palladium. Uh, and then the ink in here is actually diamine ochre. And I have to say, I was seriously thinking, I've got. About half a bottle of Sakushi left from Pilot Washizuku, and I was thinking of maybe buying another bottle of that, fear of missing out and all of that kind of thing. However, the Hyamine Oka actually works really well. And this really was the only pen that I would ink up Sakushi with. So to be honest, I think I will probably actually switch to using Diamine Oka in this pen. The next pen is the Sailor Kinga pen Sakura Nagar. So we'll do an ink swatch. Now, this is a broad nib. So it also, uh, I find it, it can write quite wet as well. Um, it typically is one of these that starts to dry out a little bit as you go writing down the page. So I do sometimes find myself uh, twisting the converter just to make it write a little bit wetter. So this is the uh, Sailor. It's King of pen sakura 
Nagar. And it is a uh, broad, uh, and again, a 21 cat gold nib, because it's a Sailor King of Hen nib. And then the ink in here is a KWZ grapefruit. And typically, I do ink up similar colors to pens, and I know that this is not a similar color. I did think uh, uh, many times of inking this up with a yellow or goldy ink. The problem with those is that most of them are typically quite dry. Sailor being, um, I normally find a little bit more of a drier writing nib. Uh, I thought the two wouldn't probably go together, so I have this one. And I do like it. I could probably put any colour in this pen, but I, I typically like that colour. The next pen is the Armando Semenica Bologna Extra, and this is the Arco Verde. So we'll do an ink swatch here. Now, these typically do write quite wet, as I mentioned before. And if you've seen my other videos, you will know that as well. I'm going to rewrite this to ASC, short for Armando Simone Club. And it's the Bologna Extra, because it's the oversized. And it's in the Arco Verde. Uh, it is a medium. And it is an 18 cat gold nib. Uh, the ink in here is uh, Ackerman. And it's Bazudan Wood. I think it's with a U. I'm just having a look. Yes, it is with a U, a D, and in grown or green, basically. I think grown is, is for green. Uh, I probably need to double check that, but I'm pretty sure it is. But that is a really lovely green ink from Ackermann. Uh, Ackermann inks are made by Diamine in the UK and then rebottled by Ackermann uh, in The Hague uh, in the Netherlands. The next pen inked up is the Anoto Magna Carta. So we'll do a, an ink swatch here. And this is a fine nib. Um, I do like the fine nib on it. Uh, I do find, though, uh, it can write a little bit dry because of the ink that I'm using in here, which is uh, a grey ink, uh, which can... I, I find some, some nibs, the border nibs, it can be quite wet. It really just depends on the pen. Uh, this is a fine nib, though. So this is the uh, Anoto... Magna Carta, and it is a fine 18 cat gold nib. And then the ink in here is Diamine Earl Grey, which is my favorite grey ink. I have looked at a bunch of other grey inks and tried to look at seeing if I could debunk Earl Grey. Um, I like Earl Grey for a number of reasons. I like this colour of grey um, is, is the first. And the second is I like Earl Grey tea uh, from Twinings. So uh, for me, it's got a double meaning and I typically like that. Um, there are other greys. There are other greys from Diamine that I could probably get. There are a lot of uh, like graphite greys or light greys and... Um, I find that this one is actually quite a nice grey. It's not too light. Um, and I would prefer something that isn't really graphite colour. Because then you might as well just use a pencil. So uh, for me, this is a good grey. Uh, I have greys uh, from other brands. Uh, I'm just trying to think. I've got a Pilot of Washizuku um, Kirisami, uh, which is nice. Uh, but again, I, I still prefer this one. Uh, and I think I've got some greys in other brands as well. Uh, I'm just looking along my ink wall, um, but I'm not spotting any at the moment. But I, I know I do have a few greys, but not as much as, as many uh, other uh, colour inks. The next pen inked up is the Estabrook SD Oversize Sparkle. And this is the Garnet Red. Uh, so this... Uh, this was the nib that I thought that I wasn't going to like. And it's interesting that sometimes you can get a nib and you think, oh, I'm just going to get this one because 
I want the pen and it's the only nib that I'm going to like probably uh, out of what is available. But I'm probably not going to like it and it actually turns out to be a really good writer. So this is the Estabrook SD. Uh, and it is the Sparkle in Garnet Red. Now, honestly, if I get another SD... Uh, from Estabrook, I will probably go for a medium nib. Um, and I will probably say, uh, yeah, maybe I should have gone with a broad. Um, but uh, this uh, is a medium here. Uh, it's a steel nib. It's a Yovo nib. Um, I can always tune the nib myself. And I, I do if I don't like how the nib writes. So I, I could make it write, write wetter if I wanted to. I could make it write smoother if I wanted to. And I could still turn a medium nib into probably a fairly good nib uh, if it wasn't good out of the box. Uh, the ink in here is uh, KWZ. It's a UK pen show exclusive for London. And it's uh, Beef Eater Red. And I have to say, I honestly thought Beef Eater Red was going to be more darker than it was. I thought it was going to be a little bit more of a crimson colour ink. Oh, I do like that ink, so um, I'm glad I have a couple of bottles of that because I am using it, and um, I will be sorry when I run out of ink. The next pen is another Estabrook SD in the Rocky Top. So, let's do uh, an ink swatch. Now, I had previously had this inked up with a Diamine Honey Burst, and I have since actually changed it to a different brown ink. It's a light brown ink, um, a little bit more darker than Honey Burst, I would say. So this is the Estabrook SD. It is an oversize, uh, but it's called the Rocky Top. And I want to call it the Rocky Top Mountain. I think that's probably what it stands for. But uh, I do like this. Now, this does have a broad still yovo nib uh, the ink in here though is a new ink that i've got from diamine in a 30 ml bottle it's diamine and it is golden brown which i have to say i'm liking this ink it, it's a good color and i'm finding it writes quite wet where a lot of brown inks typically don't write quite wet so uh, in this pen, I'm actually liking it. And I think that could be the new ink that I'm going to be using in this pen from now on. Because typically, once I find an ink that I like, I will continue to use that ink most of the time. The next pen inked up is the Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust. So we'll do an ink swatch. And this is um, a beautiful, fine nib. It's a 23 cat palladium nib with a bit of bounce to it. So this is the Visconti uh, Opera Master. And uh, this is uh, the Golden Dust. Uh, it is a fine and it's a 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is, uh, strangely, diamine ochre. And I say strangely because I have a, another pen inked up here, the Classic Pens LB5, and the colours look very different. And they can do. On a very wet writing nib, you will find, uh, in a lot of cases, the colour is a lot darker. If it's a uh, more drier writing nib, and I did mention that Sailors and Classic Pens LB5 are more drier writing nibs, they tend to then come out as a lighter ink. That's always good to know, because if you think, oh, I really like the look of this colour of an ink swatch online, and then you put it in a pen and it's a completely different colour, then try it in another pen, because you might be surprised. The last pen inked up this week is a Visconti, and this is the watermark. 
So this, uh, we'll do an ink swatch on. This is getting very low. Uh, and I will look at flushing this out. Um, I I like how this writes. I like seeing an orange ink. Uh, and I like see, uh, when I'm writing, and I like seeing an orange ink in this pen as well. So this is the Visconti watermark. Uh, it is a, a medium 23 cap palladium nib. And then the ink in here is Pilot. Eroshizuku, let's put that there, uh, and it is a Yu Yaki, which is a beautiful orange ink. And uh, if you like orange inks, but you kind of dislike them because they go crusty, I do not find that Yu Yaki goes very crusty. It, it's one of the uh, lesser crusty or uh, crustacean inks. So I think let's take a look at these pens inked up one more time. We have a Visconti Homo Sapiens London Fog in a fine 23 cap palladium nib inked up with Pilot of Washizuku Compeki. We have a Tatcha Miyabi Winter's Breath in a broad 18 carat gold nib inked up with Pelican Eagle Sign Topaz. We have a Classic Pens LB5 Kalseki in a medium 21 carat gold nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. We have a Sailor King of Pens Sakura Nagar in a broad 21 carat gold nib inked up with KWZ Grapefruit. We have an Armando Simone Club Bologna Extra Arco Verde in a medium 18 carat gold nib inked up with Akamon Bazood and Woodgrown. We have an Anoto Magna Carta in a fine 18 carat gold nib inked up with Diamine Earl Grey. We have an Estabrook SD Sparkle in oversize. In the Garnet, in a medium steel nib inked up with KWZ Beefeater Red. We have an Estabrook SD uh, in the oversize, in the Rocky Top, in a broad steel nib inked up with Diamine Golden Brown. We have a Visconti Opera Master Golden Dust in a fine 23 cap Palladium nib inked up with Diamine Ochre. And then we have a Visconti Watermark in a medium 23 cap Palladium nib inked up with Pilot of Washizuku Yuyaki. So there you have it. That's my current ink pens for this week. Thanks for watching. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and I'll see you on the next pen video. Bye-bye.